I have cancer, insidious cancer, with pernicious side effects. No, the treatment has pernicious side effects. I have stage four metastatic ovarian cancer. There is no stage five. Oh, and I have to be very tough. It appears to be a matter, as the saying goes, of life and death. I know all about life and death. I am, after all, a professor of 17th century poetry, specialising in the holy sonnets of John Donne, which explore mortality in greater depth than any other body of work in the English language. And I know for a fact that I am tough. A demanding professor, uncompromising, never one to turn from a challenge. That is why I chose to study John Donne while a student of the great E.M. Ashford. Oh, yes. Your essay in Holy Sonnet 6, Miss Baring, is a melodrama with a veneer of scholarship unworthy of you. To say nothing of done, do it again. Oh, I... Begin with the text, Miss Baring, not with a feeling. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. You've entirely missed the point of the poem, because I must say you've used an edition of the text that is inauthentically punctuated. In the Gardner edition of the text... But that edition is checked Miss out Barry? of the life, sorry. You take this too lightly. This is metaphysical poetry, not the modern novel. The standards of scholarship and critical reading which one would apply to any other text are simply insufficient. The effort must be total for the results to be meaningful. Do you think that the punctuation of the last line of this sonnet is merely an insignificant detail? The sonnet begins with a valiant struggle with death calling on all the forces of intellect and drama to vanquish the enemy but it is ultimately about overcoming the seemingly insuperable barriers separating life, death, and eternal life. In the edition you chose, this profoundly simple meaning is sacrificed to hysterical punctuation. And death, capital D, shall be no more, semicolon. Death, capital D, comma, thou shalt die, exclamation mark. If you're going for this sort of thing, I suggest you take up Shakespeare. Gardner's edition of the Holy Sonnets returns to the Westmoreland manuscript source of 1610. Not for sentimental reasons, I assure you, but because Helen Gardner is a scholar. It reads, And death shall be no more, comma. Death thou shalt die. Nothing but a breath, a comma, separates life from life everlasting. Very simple, really. With the original punctuation restored, death is no longer something to act out on a stage with exclamation marks. It is a comma, a pause. In this way, the uncompromising way, one learns something from the poem, wouldn't you say? Life, death, soul, God, past, present, not insuperable barriers, not semicolons, just a comma. Life, death, I see. It's a metaphysical conceit, it's wit. I'll go back to the library about It is not night. wit, Miss Baring, it is truth. The paper's not the point. Isn't it? Vivian, you're a bright young woman. Use your intelligence. Don't go back to the library. Go out. Enjoy yourself with friends, hmm? I, um, went outside. It was a warm day. I... Uh, there were students on the lawn talking about... Well, nothing. Laughing. Simple human truth. Uncompromising scholarly standards. They're connected. I just couldn't 